so today's uh, Wednesday, and on Tuesday, yesterday, Tesla announced that they just laid off Tesla, one of the most successful, cutting edge, you know, super cool companies, announced that they were laying off 700 people right after their once a year performance review. Everybody got a rating and the people that got a low rating got fired. This is not an anomaly. Most companies will rate their people. Most companies will have their people rate some sort of 360 degree survey. Most companies will have some sort of employee opinion survey. All of those different things, performance ratings, 360 surveys, employee surveys, all of them are data. And therefore, for you as an employee, or for you as a manager, or for you as an HR practitioner, you're living in a world of data. You're living in a big data world. Unfortunately, most of those sources of data, performance ratings, 360 surveys, employee surveys, most of those sources of data are sources of bad data. Tesla, Elon Musk, super smart, doesn't even know that almost all of the data that he has about his people is bad data. Bad data in the sense that it doesn't measure what he thinks it measures. He fired the wrong 700 people and he has no idea about it. So for all of us who work or who manage people who work or who are HR practitioners, we need to know what good data about people actually is. We need to be a heck of a lot more data fluent than we are. So, so I promised uh, a whole bunch of you that I would do a data series. It might sound a little inside baseball, but given how important it is, given that, that you will be paid, uh, promoted, trained, developed, or in the case of Tesla, fired, based upon data, it's really in your interest to know the limit and the extent of what we can actually and accurately measure in the world of people. So let's start here. When it comes to data, there are only three words that you need to remember. Let me say that again. They're not only three words. These are the three most important words to remember. Here's the first one. Reliability. Whenever you bump into a piece of data, whether it's your performance rating or whether it's some question in an employee opinion survey that you're supposed to fill out or as a manager, whether you're being told by your HR department to get better on question six, the first thing you should ask is, is that data reliable? What does that mean? What does reliability mean when it comes to data? It means, does the question measure or does the tool measure what we say it measures? If we have a performance rating, does it actually measure performance reliably? If we have a question and employee survey that, that supposedly measures mission and purpose, does the question actually measure mission and purpose? So the first thing you should ask when you bump into data, whether you're giving it or receiving it, is, is it reliable? Does it actually measure what it purports to measure? Again, you had 700 people at Tesla that were fired because their performance rating was low. Well, actually, was their performance low if they were fired based on that rating? Reliability. Here's the next one. That says variation. If we've built a tool that reliably measures something, then when we take that tool, let's call it a measuring stick. Let's say we built a measuring stick to measure performance and then we apply the measuring stick to measure the different performance of different people, does our measuring stick actually create variation, range? Does our measuring stick reveal the range, the true real world range of performance that actually exists? Performance ratings, for example, don't have any flipping variation. That's why when you actually apply so many performance rating tools to actual performance in the real world, you end up with everybody getting a four and a five. One of the reasons why HR departments force range, it's called a forced curve, it sounds like this, hey, manager of a team, you're only allowed 20% of your people can get fives, 30% of your people can get fours, and then 20% of your people have to get ones. That's called a forced curve. You've probably heard of that. The reason we have to force the curve is because our measuring stick doesn't actually produce real world variation and range. Everyone gets a four and a five. Because of that, we have to force the curve. That's a problem, of course, because in the real world, we, if we force the curve, then our measuring stick is not revealing the true range of performance that exists in the world. It'd be like having a, it'd be like having a thermometer that could only measure 
fours and fives or 50 degrees to 60 degrees. And then you go out into the world and you start measuring the temperature and then somebody from HR comes in and says, I know it might say 60 degrees today, but you've used all of your 60 degree measurements up. From now on, you can only use 50 degrees and lower. So you come outside one day, measure the temperature. It says 60 degrees, but you can't actually say it's 60 degrees. You've got to say it's 40 degrees when you know it isn't 40 degrees, it's 60. But you've run out of 40, I mean 60 degree measurements. That sounds stupid as I'm saying it, and it is stupid. It's as stupid as having a forced curve in performance ratings. So variation, does the measuring stick that we've made actually reveal real world variation? Because there is in the real world variation. You with me? All right, the last one is this one. Validity, validity, <laughs> validity. Let's say that you've built a measuring stick that actually does reliably measure uh, length or inches and feet. And let's say that your measuring stick's pretty good, so you take your measuring stick and you start measuring different lengths of wood, and it does actually reveal the different lengths of wood. So your measuring stick is revealing true variation in the real world. This question then is, does what we're measuring matter? Here's what I mean by that. Let's say that we've built a way to measure caloric intake. We've built a way to measure calories. And then we can measure the different intake of different calories by different people. So we can see different people are taking in different amounts of calories. This question then says, well, so what? Does the amount of calories that you intake affect or drive anything else in the real world? Like, I don't know, your weight or your height, or your longevity. Can we predict that people who have seriously low levels, as measured reliably, seriously low levels of caloric intake, can we predict in the real world that those people will be undernourished, less healthy, lower weight, lower height? Or if people have a really healthy amount of reliably measured caloric intake, can we prove that people who have that kind of higher level of caloric intake are healthier, live longer, grow taller, are of a better weight? That's called validity. It's actually called, sorry, but it is, it's called criterion related validity. Does the thing we're measuring validly predict something, some criteria in the real world that we think is important? In your world, in my world, the world of work, this validity question is the, is the most important question for us to get right. Because if we end up reliably measuring something that doesn't actually drive external criteria in the real world, we're measuring stuff that doesn't matter. 360 degree surveys, many of you will participate in those. Most of the things that you're being measured on in a 360, to 360 degree survey have no criterion related validity, as in the people who do better on the 360 survey do not then do better in the real world of work. Most employee opinion surveys have no validity to them, as in the people who score better on the questions in the survey do not end up producing better outcomes for themselves or their teams in the real world. This is the most exacting standard for our data. Does our measuring stick measure something that actually matters in the real world? So whenever you bump into people data of any kind, whether it's a performance rating, 360 survey, employee opinion survey, whatever it is, Ask yourself these three questions. Does it reliably measure what it says it measures? Whatever it's saying it's measuring, does it reliably reveal true variation and range in the real world? And thirdly, does that range in the real world as measured by our measuring stick predict anything criterion related in the real world? Like behavior, did you quit? Were you more productive? Did you have fewer lost work days? Did you deliver higher levels of measured customer satisfaction? Those are the three 
filters that you should use. And if you can answer yes, 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 then you have good data. If you have any doubt about any one of these three, then if you're not careful, you have bad data. And if you have bad data, it doesn't matter how much of it you have, adding lots and lots of bad data together doesn't turn it into good data. You just have lots and lots and lots of noise.